Hello everyone, I'm Lockhart QT and welcome to a very special Mass Effect related speculation and theory video and I have a very special guest with me. Would you like to go and introduce yourself? Yes, hello, uh, Lockhart's community. I am Atharia, also known as Paragon7 on YouTube and I also kind of go over Mass Effect theories and speculation on my channel. So yeah, thank you so much for having me, Lockhart. Uh, this, is an, no, uh, the, this is a great collaboration. It's a pleasure. <laughs> It's, yeah. It, as you can imagine, it's kind of um, weird to get these things set up because of the different time, you know, time zones and everything going on. But luckily, we managed to get it sorted. So, um, if you guys are wondering how this is going to work, we are going to sort of drum through a load of theories and speculations chronologically from when Bioware have revealed the next game all the way through to the super recent stuff in the past sort of couple months so we're going to go through it and i think probably the best place to start is probably the beginning the reveal trailer from 2020 isn't it sounds good yep we can go from the top Okay, so if um, for those who don't know, because I, I don't know if you get this as well, but in my comment section, I do actually get videos where people are like, oh my God, there's a there's a new next Mass Effect game coming out. I, I didn't hear about this. Oh, but, really? Uh, yeah, no, I, I honestly get those comments all the time. I'd say I get it at least one one or two a video where people That's are like, oh my crazy. God, there's a, there's a game coming back. No way. I actually, <laughs> that has never actually happened to me before. I've gotten ones where it said like... Um, I think one commenter said that they were surprised that the game was still in pre-production, but I've never actually gotten a comment that that's like, oh man, there's a Mass Effect game coming out. That That's super wild. No, I, I seriously do get it like once every so often where they're like, oh my God, Liara's back? What? Or what? kind of just like, no wait, way. Mass Effect 5? What happened to 4? <laughs> that is, oh no, okay. That one, that one I get quite a bit, but that one I feel like is just... <laughs> Everybody's just being oh, nitpicky yeah. about Andromeda didn't get a number and stuff, but yeah. But it get it gets super confusing when you get into the naming because oh, you've it's got ridiculous. obviously Mass Effect 4, it could be straight after Mass Effect 3. You've got Mass yeah. Effect 4 in terms of Andromeda pre-production internally was called Mass Effect 4. Yeah. It was it, then obviously you've got five, which counts Andromeda as a number, and it, and then you could, hey, it, we could get to 2027 or whenever they reveal. I hope it's not 2027. <laughs> I hope it's a bit sooner than that. But they reveal the next game. It could be Andromeda 2. I, th I no. think it would be marketing suicide. But <laughs> they would never. <laughs> I really don't think they would They would go ahead and, and say Andromeda 2 after how long would it be? If they do 2027, it would be 10 years oh to have a God, sequel. I don't, that. they wouldn't, they wouldn't. <laughs> The marketing, like nobody would buy the game and it would just be horrible. I, I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> that would be crazy. I think it, it's, uh, you probably have seen it. I'll, I'll have it on screen sort of for people to watch afterwards. But the, the gif of Ryder walking up and down the stairs all glitchy. And then obviously the, yeah. my face is too tired. Oh, Those two man. things just destroyed the marketing land yeah. at launch. I it was obliterated it. I felt so bad, you know, like watching it after the fact, because I played Andromeda, I think, in 2023, like at the beginning of the year. And it was fine. Like, you know, the glitches weren't there and stuff like that. So I felt super bad that it just launched with so many bugs. Like it was just it was bad. And with the yeah, face I'm tired stuff, you know, like it's just Oh yeah, the bad they, animations. They never really went they did go back at the time and obviously fix the facial animations, yeah. but they never really, because obviously the, there is only so much you can do without completely recreating the game from the ground up. Exactly. Um, like you said, I mean, I played Andromeda in 2019, I think. Yeah, yeah. And the, like, like I said, the bugs weren't there. I, I did have a pretty big one where... I think it was from like a Ket drop ship where it would just keep it would just infinitely spawn Ket to oh, the point where the game would crash. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I think the worst bug that I had was I think my character walked through Drac at one point, like in a cutscene. And it was like a super important cutscene, and it was just like it completely tanked the mood and like <laughs> I was so confused. But I never had anything like that fully crash the game. Um, my load times were just absolutely ridiculous, um, especially on Vold. I think it was the the snowy planet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vold. I, I I could not load into Vold. It it took like I'm not even joking. It took I think 
10 minutes to load into the planet at one point. It was bad. <laughs> it was very bad. Yeah, no, I, I, I played on console, so for, for me, sadly, Andromeda will be constantly and forever 1080p 30. I, I went back oh, and played yeah. it on PC probably, I think it was last year for the first time, and I played it on basically Max. And I was just blown away with how good the game looks to this day. Okay. Yeah, no, I played it on console as well. And yeah, I just, it definitely didn't hold up. <laughs> um, yeah, for, I would have to reason, buy it on they PC. Never went, they, they went back on Xbox and actually gave it a bit of a facelift. I think on Xbox, it does go to, I want to say 1440p oh. with... I think it's for I think it's it's a weird frame rate. It does that thing where it tries to keep it at like 40 45 and then oh. everything off in the distance is at like 30 or below. Oh. I know like Halo Halo did that as well and I think Gears of War kind of does it in a couple of instances but uh, for some reason with PlayStation uh 4 Pro and uh PS5 they just right. didn't touch it. I have no idea why. No, yeah. When I was playing it, I was surprised because I had just finished playing, I think, Horizon Forbidden West. And that game looked beautiful on uh, on PlayStation. And then to go from like that to Andromeda was like, it was very different and <laughs> I was a little bit disappointed for sure. But I'll definitely check out the PC because I had no idea that it was that much uh, better on the graphics side of things. I mean, in regards to the next game, I do think that regardless of what happens... I do think the game will look good. Whether it runs good mm -hmm. is dependent on if it goes through development hell and if the devs are overworked and if there's internal struggle or if the game is just rushed out by EA and sort of, you know, like the corporate side of things. But I think the game will look good because that, that's one thing that Mass Effect has never really faltered on. Mm -hmm. Even with the original, like back in the day, if you compare it to... You know, games that came out at the same time. I think that the entire original trilogy and Andromeda graphically looks brilliant. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I agree. I mean, we saw a hint of that with the N7 Day 2023 reveal, right? With the character. Obviously it said like yeah. gameplay footage, not final at the bottom, but the fact that that N7, when, you know, they were turning and stuff like that looked so real. Like if we can get even like 70% of that style, the next game is going to be like incredible if that's like the quality of cutscene um or even like actual gameplay like oh we're, we're going to be blown away for sure i mean, I, I remember sort of looking at andromeda back in the day we were talking 2016 when they were going you know like full marketing and they were showing off the gameplay mm. because when andromeda was being marketed they were saying oh andromeda is going to be for the ps4 pro and i remember Andromeda looked I thought at the time it looked great obviously I wasn't too bothered because back in back in the back in the day I just didn't really care about Mass Effect <laughs> unfortunately mm -hmm. I didn't get into it until a few years later but um I'm just hoping that the next game looks good I mean speaking of speaking of looking good I do think across pretty much all of the marketing so far I, I think it looks good in terms of what they've shown. I think obviously it's a bit more mystery and it's very much so cryptic and we don't really know what particularly at this moment of time is going on. Obviously, we've only got little sort of bigger things, more tangible things here and there. But right. I, I think even going back to the very beginning with the 2020 reveal trailer, I think it looks uh, fantastic. And I don't know about you, but I remember at the time with the Game Awards, I remember watching it live and I would just replay that one trailer over and over again because for, mm. for me, it was the music. I just, I just fell in love with it. Oh yeah, no, it was incredible. So when I first started playing Mass Effect, it was 20... It was August of 2022, and I finished the series on January 1st of 2023. So I actually didn't watch the Game Awards live and, and saw the reveal. Um, so what happened was I finished the game, you know, chose, chose an ending in Mass Effect 3, and then I immediately watched the trailer afterward because my friend showed it to me. And I did the exact same thing, though. Like, I kept replaying it, and just that build up with the music um the amount of just the the really high quality animation just seeing liara like i i don't know if they actually got the mod no that liara is definitely animated in that shot right 
um, seeing her look so realistic, um, the mud skipper in the background, like just seeing her pick up that N7 piece and stuff like that. Definitely. It, it felt like they were putting on an incredible, you know, obviously product for the game awards and stuff like that for the reveal and everything. But yeah, if we can get that similar style quality, like Mass Effect fans aren't going to be ready. I, I, I fully think they're going to do a really, really good job of just hitting us in the feels, especially like with the music. If, if they bring back that composer, oh my goodness gracious, like we're not going to be ready. I mean, the if you look at sort of the composer's history, but both composers for the Mass Effect trilogy um, and then the one for Andromeda, mm. their sort of lineage and I guess CV, if you will, is really good. Like they've got stuff with Call of Duty, they've got stuff with mm. I want to say Gears of War on the top of my head, and mm -hmm. you know, big games. And when when I, when I say Call of Duty, I more mean the campaign and zombies. Like the, the zombies mode and things like that okay. which always has had a really good soundtrack and sort of ambiance and backing mm -hmm. music and I, I think that's one thing that in my opinion the original trilogy i think mass effect one in particular for me at least did really well was the music and the ambiance mm -hmm. and this trailer for me you know the bit where specifically it's the ship uh the i want to say the shuttle or mud skipper or yes, whatever going the mud skipper the yeah planet. And then it just it it starts to pick up a bit more. That's oh. when during that trailer I get really excited because I I think the audio from start to finish was spectacular. The fact that obviously they've got War of the Worlds, the Apollo Eleven moon landing. They've got little snippets from I think it's like First Contact War, isn't it? Yes. Like, um, radio transmissions, and then. The, it then cuts into obviously the big reveal, which is like the Reaper. Like, I can't do the noise, but it's the you know the. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was spot on. They should they should totally hire you to play one of the well, Reaper roles. Me, me by the way, I'll I'll do, um, I'll, I'll just do that one noise and I'll take a paycheck. I'm not I'm not privy to it. I mean, I, I think it would be really cool if uh, for the next game they did what they did. Because obviously Mass Effect, the original trilogy, hired some big talent. Mm. But what a lot of people don't know is that Andromeda had some like really huge people in it, even as just side characters. And I kind of feel like that's something I would love to see come back. I mean, obviously we've, um, I'm trying to think of a name. Uh, is it Ali Hillis? Voice yeah. Of Liara? Oh, yeah. And then... And then we've probably got, um, obviously, the, the voice of Legion and all of the Geth coming back. I mean, that's pretty much, you know, confirmed at this point, or For at sure. least it's teased. But, but the question is now, who else are they going to bring back? Is Mark Mir going to come back? Is Jennifer Hale going to come back? I mean... We, we, I'd, I'd love it. I'd love for it to happen. Yeah, well, I think that just from a marketing perspective, right? Like, in the trailer, they've obviously teased Liara... Michael Gamble on Twitter has, you know, multiple times, you know, said in the 2022 Relay Intercept, you know, Liara saying the don't underestimate human defiance. So we for sure are probably going to get Ali Hillis back. Um, yeah. In my opinion, it just it wouldn't be the same to bring back a character like Liara to tease things very obviously, you know, zooming in on the trailer and stuff that it's going to take place in the Milky Way with Andromeda very clearly in the background and Liara picking up the N7, you know, helmet piece in the trailer, I just don't see how you can't bring back Jennifer Hale and Mark Mir. And one of the reasons that I also think they would bring Shepard back, um, you know, just from a marketing perspective, is every single N7 day, Jennifer Hale and Mark Mir put on these amazing N7 just cast panels that so many fans turn into um and they do that just completely you know like not through bioware or anything it's just because they love the franchise that much and they love shepherd that much um so i don't see how the bioware team can see something like that and be like oh yeah we're gonna go with a new protagonist um and or you know <laughs> have a marketing nightmare and, and go back to writer um so i personally think just from marketing it definitely makes sense to bring back Shepard, bring back Jennifer Hale, bring back Mark Mir. 
Um, and already, right, you're 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 bringing back like those names, like those style of names. Um, it, it's already going to be like close to blockbuster, you know. Yeah, I mean the if you look at it as a whole, it's just because obviously the, the the state that Bioware are in now is a very precarious position because obviously andromeda commercially although I, I, after the fact that a lot of things got tweaked and fixed the game did a lot better and people played it and said oh actually it's not that bad but with anthem obviously dying as a live service bioware are now treading on very thin ice because if dreadwolf goes badly we've got no idea what that means for mass effect and i think that mass effect is bioware's bread and butter it's their biggest franchise they need to get this right. And I think one thing from a purely marketing commercial and getting the casual audience on board would just be to bring back Shepard. Here's Commander Shepard. You can play as Shepard again. We're bringing back Mark. We're bringing back Jennifer. Have at it as you will. Buy our new <laughs> game. Liara's back. And then maybe they might even introduce like Garrus is back, Joker is back, Tally's back. You know? mm. <laughs> sort of go like full, um, I, I guess, like all the way with it, if you see what I mean. No, yeah. Just hearing you say those types of things like Joker's back, Tally's back, like that's just getting me excited, you know, and and just thinking about people that they might have, you know, like players and fans of Mass Effect that they might have lost um, in the whole Andromeda kerfuffle just saying those words like Tally's back, Eris is back, Liara is back, and potentially Shepard's back, um, that's going to get a casual fan excited. That's going to get a fan that's been here since, you know, the release in 2007 excited. Um, so to me, it, it definitely does uh, make sense going forward. Like, and with regards to, you mentioned um, the success of Dreadwolf, um, I am curious whether even if Dreadwolf isn't as successful as, um, you know, potentially being like best game of the year or, or something like that, like even if it's just OK and they're just like treading water, I do think that they will give a little bit more leeway for room to release the next Mass Effect, just because I think the Legendary Edition that released in 2021 um, was so successful and brought in so many new fans, like me included. Um, and all of the merchandise and stuff like that, that they've been releasing, like that's been doing really well. Like I've been seeing a lot of fans online being like, yeah, I'm buying this. I'm, I'm like, I'm buying the jacket. I'm buying, you know, this type of like N7 mug. So I feel like hopefully just with the overall success of the legendary edition and just, you know, the Bioware store selling those types of things, um, that EA will give them a little bit of room and hopefully we'll be able to see Bioware's vision of the next game. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, it, it would kind of be, um, a little bit sad if they release all of these new hints and teasers and we don't get to see Bioware's and this specific Mass Effect team's, like, vision for it. Um, and it has to, like, you know, the IP has to get picked up by something like Larian or something like that would be absolutely crazy if that uh if that happened yeah that, i think that would be um i can't think of the i don't know if it's like defcon 5 or defcon 1 i don't know what what the highest is i think it's one isn't it but anyway um i that would be worst case scenario obviously we're not I, at the moment i don't really want to sort of I, I guess like talk about that but at the end of the day we have to bioware are in that position now they've in the nicest way ea and bioware have kind of done this to themselves and it's a very interesting thing with a lot of key staff members leaving and then you've had a lot of key staff members returning and it's just a really interesting thing to talk about overall but in, in terms of where Mass Effect goes next I, Bioware have to get this right this isn't just a like oh it's a six out of ten like it's you know like sort of like andromeda with um because obviously at the, at the end of the day andromeda yes it did launch with loads of bugs yes it did have a basically disastrous development cycle just because uh, i don't know if you know this but they tried to do 
they sort of looked at No Man's Sky and said, we're going to do that mm. for the next Mass Effect. We're going to make everything procedurally generated. Mm-hmm. And then it went horrifically wrong. And mm-hmm. then obviously you've got all the issues with the Frostbite engine and everything that went into that. At the end of the day, I still think Andromeda is a good game and I, I, I still replay it once a year. Um, there are some aspects of Andromeda I wish I hadn't replayed, basically anything <laughs> with Liam. But... <laughs> but, you know, it's... I, I think Bioware have to get this right. And, you know, looking at what they revealed so far, I think that they're, they're hitting all of the right places, especially with the reveal trailer. I think from a marketing and everything perspective, them showing off both the the, Reap, the Reaper siren or noise or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. teasing that and then showing Liara was genius. I think that was fully the right thing to do. They're like, okay, look, we've made a few mistakes recently. Here's Liara. We're making another Mass Effect game. There you are. No, yeah, I definitely think that they knew exactly what they were doing. And like you'd mentioned earlier, like with the music and stuff like that, they were hitting on all of the right notes. Um, What I am curious about is we haven't really gotten many like concrete, here is for sure this character that you love that is going to come back since 2020. Um, So it's been, you know, three and seven days since then. And we've gotten, you know, like we've gotten a Geth poster where you could argue you're seeing Liara again, you know, kind of leading that one pack. Um, You hear her, but, you know, and then and then obviously in 2023, um, you see an N7, but you don't actually know, like, who it is like they're kind of being almost coy with who they're teasing and and they're making it super confusing and i'm not sure that that is kind of helping their case um i'm hoping that soon we'll we'll get more of a concrete like here's another thing that you can for sure get excited about which obviously i'm sure that they're trying not to overshadow the dreadwolf release and everything like that but um, I hope that eventually they do give us like a solid here is something that you can for sure get excited about. Um, cause yeah, I mean, maybe it could be that we saw, you know, they, they kind of sneakily hid Garrus in the, in the nightclub, uh, coat of the N7, but, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's, I've always debated that, especially with the, the nightclub poster, it looks like Garrus, but I, I think that Garrus is such a big character, an iconic character. Um, obviously, he is the the second highest uh, companion for romance for the, the entire female audience. I mm-hmm. mean, I even did a poll on my channel where I, I basically said, here's every single companion, squad mate and crew mate, vote here you go and garris got third so i mean obviously garris is very high up there so i kind of feel like my aware know that i think would probably give garris a bit more fanfare sort of as they would with liara i mean if you you know uh, more evidence for that is if you look recently with the destiny 2 crossover they did would you i i i'm a big destiny fan so that was a very nice thing for me personally. that's awesome i don't play but (laughs) i saw it and it looks amazing yeah, I mean, you've got the obviously the N7 armor, you've got the Liara armor, but what really surprised me was the fact that they made the Hunter armor Garrus. I mean, mm. it's one of those where as soon as you see it, it makes complete sense. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, I, I don't know. It, it, it's something that I, I don't, I didn't see a Bioware Destiny 2 crossover happening at all, to be honest. I, I more sort of on what you were talking about earlier, I kind of thought that they would really not touch mass effect now until november and focus on dragon age but that doesn't really seem to be the case with a lot of things that are coming out i do think in the summer unless we get something from bioware like a little teaser that maybe they do like a full live stream reveal maybe they do their own like bioware direct sort of thing where they do like maybe i don't know 20 minute half an hour live stream they just go full on in with dread wolf and then maybe at the end they're like here's a f- another 30 second teaser or something like that but i i, I do think it's either going to be the summer and seven day i mean and seven day obviously we're definitely going to get something yeah. even if it is just concept art but 
Um, I think the Game Awards is probably the other big thing to come after that. But again, we're going to have to wait and see. I mean, so far, obviously, we've had loads. We've had Liara. We've had the Geth in both audio and sort of dead body form on the poster, <laughs> which is really weird to say. And the crater being in the shape of a Geth's head. And then in throughout all of the concept arts, there are little things here and there that are both from the original trilogy and Andromeda, where you've got... For example, the Omega sign in the N7 Day 2022 yes. concept art. You've also got the, I'm blanking on the name of it, the club from Andromeda. I want to say Vortex. Um, I think you might be right, but it has been some time since I've last played Andromeda, so I'm not too sure. I could try to search it. Yeah, there's there's also the concept art where I think it's like a load of Solarians and Turians walking in a city. It kind of looks like oh yeah, Bessio or Ilium or somewhere like that. And again, there's little things in the background which are both from the original trilogy and Andromeda. And the fact that Michael Gamble and other members of the team have gone on the record saying, "I don't," because my th there's that famous tweet where it was a guy basically having a go at Michael Gamble saying. How dare you forget about Andromeda? Andromeda is one of my favorite games. Then he responded saying, "No, don't worry." <laughs> sort of, sort of yeah. vibe like, "Don't yeah. worry, like we're we're introducing Andromeda in some way." <laughs> and the fact that various members of the team again have gone on record and said they're replaying Andromeda constantly, as mm -hmm. well as the original trilogy. So it's it's a bit of a, um, I guess like mashup of different things at the moment mm. I, I to be, i've got to be completely honest with this i actually don't mind them reusing some assets from the legendary edition and andromeda in terms of you know things like signage and signposts because oh yeah it, andromeda like if you play it on pc at, on max some of those textures i would argue and say basically look like they've come out today so they could definitely mm. do that but It'd be interesting because obviously there's loads of rumors of the game being on Unreal Engine, more specifically mm -hmm. Unreal Engine 5, rather than Frostbite, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I, I, I've dabbled in a little bit of game design because back in the day I wanted to go into game design and then I just didn't. Mm -hmm. Turns out I don't like programming, so... <laughs> fair, <laughs> I'm not very, very fair. At, it's complicated. I'm not, I'm not very good at math, so I'm not good at <laughs> I'm, I'm more on like the artistic side rather than the academic <laughs> side. But the um, I, I would I have I have actually had some experience, not a lot, in Frostbite, and it was like one of the worst things ever. So oh, if they are going to do um, Unreal Engine Five, that's great. Oh, we're seeing a load of developers nowadays actually switching over from whatever they're using to Unreal because, you know, it, it's just an easier game engine to learn and it's more commonly known. And I've got to be honest, the final product for some cases looks brilliant. Did you ever see that um, fan project where someone recreated the Omega port from Mass Effect Two but in Unreal Engine Five? I didn't see the Omega one, but I saw a render of Jack in Unreal Engine and I was blown away. Like it was it was absolutely insane uh, in Unreal Engine 5, um, Jack from Mass Effect 2. Um, and I think I want to say I saw like another random just model. It wasn't like a character or something like that. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely have to check that out. They did the entire just Omega like how it actually looks in Mass Effect 2, but they just did it in Unreal 5? I, I've got to be honest, I haven't actually seen that. I, that. That's something that's sort of gone off my radar, but um, I'll definitely, you know, I'll probably check it out, you know, when we're editing this later on. But the, I think the textures and overall quality of un, UE5 is bonkers, purely for like, if it just looks yeah. so realistic. I don't know if you've seen the, they did the tech demo where it was the Matrix, I did like a little demo for it was like a matrix uh i guess like concept for a game oh. it was, i don't know how long it is but you can you can download it on playstation 5 and pc and there's this one image of like a car on fire blowing up oh. and somebody put it somebody on twitter put it side by side with the same car with the same effects and they basically said which one's real and you can't tell oh that's that, that's awesome 
That's awesome. No, yeah, I think the um the the recent teaser that we got in on N7 Day 2023, I'm pretty sure was that confirmed to be an Unreal or do we not know anything about that in particular? I think what I'm thinking of is a few I want to say like a week or two before N7 Day, there was a tweet where somebody that works on Unreal Engine 5 was like, "Is there anything that you would kind of want to change?" And then that's when my gamble replied with that kind of Solarian eye twitch. Um, yeah, yeah, no, so exactly is that a confirmation? I don't know. But yeah, like regardless, though, the, the new N7 character looked so good in that uh, gameplay trailer. So if that's a hint it's of what's of to come, that, it's going to be good. It's pretty much confirmed, to be honest. It's again, we have that tweet from Michael Gamble. Uh, there's a couple of people are working at bioware that have again liked things or retweeted things specifically regarding unreal engine 5 and there was to be honest in the past three years there's been various job postings at bioware where some of them in the description it states that they'll be using unreal engine right. 5 also uh, sorry, um, unreal engine uh it doesn't actually specify which one it just says unreal engine but Again, it's kind of one of those things that's com pretty much confirmed, but it, we're just going to have to wait. I imagine it will be when either the title drops or the, I guess, like CGI, the the re-re-reveal trailer, <laughs> whatever that will be, <laughs> um, where it will probably have, you know, at the end where it, sa it says, like, coming to PlayStation, Xbox, etc. Right. It'll probably say under there Unreal Engine 5 because they have to do it for sort of legality. Right, so yeah. they'll probably announce that then. but. You know, it's, I mean, going back to sort of what we've had so far, I mean, the, I don't know if you've seen the posts on ArtStation of all of the separate things that were in the 2020 reveal trailer, yes. the, the artist who did those. I have, um, yeah, Blake Sullivan. Those were incredible. But my, um, again, I, I hope this doesn't sound like I'm sort of digging myself up here, but the, uh, when I was at, when I was doing my master's at uni, I had, um, okay, I've got basically, I've got quite a lot of experience with 3D modeling and 3D art. Right. And it's things like I'm looking through some of them now with the, um, you know, the, the helmet piece and whatnot with the N7. It just looks incredible from mm. a modeling perspective with the snow and how it's animated, you know, with Liara brushing it off. So mm. if that if that even is a small taste and teaser of what we're getting, then I think we're in very good, very good hands or very good uh, care with Bioware, hopefully. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, like just looking at the trailer, I mean, the one thing that I was going to actually uh, ask you, because you can brought up the, the Mass Effect title, obviously it's probably going to be, I mean, maybe we'll get lucky and we might get a title this on seven day. Who knows? As opposed to just referring it to either the next Mass Effect, Mass Effect 4 or Mass Effect 5. But um, I was going to ask you, have you seen the one tweet that Michael Gamble had where he said, um, I think it was Bon, I think it was Bon Diesel who um, asked Mike Gamble, tease us with your next game as an acronym. And Mike Gamble responded with M-E-M-E. -M -E. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's... Do you have an opinion on what the acronym could be? Ooh, it, I think M-E-M-E, -M -E, so obviously like Mass Effect. Obviously it's not going to be Mass Effect, Mass Effect. But like, well, you but... never know. <laughs> That would be that would be that would be very memey of Mike Gamble. I think for hardcore fans, they would go with like Mass Effect Four, Mass Effect Five, like a numbered title. But then again, uh, a lot of studios and game companies are actually straying away from that now because they're yeah. finding that people who've never played a Mass Effect game will start, and they you know they'll get the latest game because it's the latest game. They'll look at it and they go hang on, it's Mass Effect 5, why, you know, I don't really want to, you know, start now when it's the fifth entry, obviously that's, yeah. To be I different, definitely understand but... that. No, definitely, because if you think, think about, like, will go with a subtitle of some kind. Yeah, because I was just going to say, uh, sorry to interrupt you there, um, yeah, for, okay. for Final <laughs> Fantasy, it's, I think it's the only franchise that for sure can go with, like, a 
Final Fantasy 16 and people will still buy it just because it's, you know, it's Final Fantasy. Like you can you can technically jump in anywhere and everybody te- usually knows that each entry is kind of its own thing. But I do think it's a smart thing for them to move away, for Bioware to move away from the numbered entries because just like from from my own perspective, if there is a numbered title, you know, I'm seeing like a like, a, I don't even know, like if it was like a Mass Effect 5 and I was completely just not in the series, it would feel like it's it's a bit of a barrier to jump in. So I personally think that the next game will be the fifth installment um, and it probably won't have a number. Um, I am curious, though, whether they would stick with the Emmy Emmy. Um, and I assume it'll be more of like a, a sci fi style title. Um, the other one, obviously, like Mass Effect Andromeda, that's very like straightforward. But for them to have like a two, like a like a Mass Effect something something, I, I feel like they have something up their sleeve there. Yeah, again, uh, again, obviously it's it's in pre production, so they do have room to change the title quite a for bit. For sure. But I th- I think in terms of a which is something that we saw teased during the recent N seven day, I think they might go with the you know that document in I think it's in the documentary in the art book of all the different titles for the first Mass Effect game. Oh I yeah. I think they might go with something from that or either a combination of two things where for example they call it like I don't know, Mass Effect Epsilon effect or Oh um, like I d I don't know what I don't know what the subtitle could be for ME. That's a re- that that's a really sort of difficult one to I guess think of, but um yeah that's interesting though that you brought up epsilon because do you kind of want to discuss the um the three word thing that they they gave to us the epsilon oculon nebula hint that they kind of provided to us on the recent n7 day i've actually just found so i had to actually search for it then but the 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 different names but yeah definitely i mean i i've seen those i i was very fortunate to i streamed as it was happening live yeah so same it was that. crazy it was so crazy honestly it was really good as well i really um i really liked that where you had to do the binary and then obviously it was figure it out as it goes along obviously the big takeaway from those uh, encryptions was that one line in particular which was andromeda distress signal detected mm. that, that was when the entire mass effect community just went up in an absolute storm for like yeah i don't know how long the wait was in between i want to say it was like half an hour or something i think and it was an entire hour we were just freaking out i know it was what the hell's going on here and I... it's kind of Again, I this is very tinfoil hat conspiracy theory here. I'm here for it. It is implied that the person encrypting those files is Liara. Oh, so it, really? I actually haven't heard that take before. It could be, again, like if it is Liara, then that opens a whole can of worms. It, 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 how is Andromeda involved? It, are they going to go into the stuff with Ryder and what happened in that story? How did if Andromeda is involved? How do they go over the fact that it's a six hundred and thirty-four year travel and time skip from Mass Effect Two? And it, it it opens a whole can of worms. But in ter- in terms of the title, just going back to that a second, it was ele- obviously Mass Effect Element Element Zero Unearthed Bio War nebula the nebula effect oculon the octagon which i i kind of love that one just because mm. it sounds like you know like a uh because octagon i think it's like an mma fight yeah it's yeah, like yeah. A fighting ring isn't yeah it? <laughs> so i always think of that <laughs> and then you had uh war in the citadel then just the citadel and then the epsilon effect so they might just pull something from that but like if it's Mass Effect Bio War or something, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not very good at coming up with titles. I no, did do it's hard. Sort of a video where I just came up with a whole load of titles, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's <laughs> something that completely pure speculation, right? Like there's no way that we, <laughs> that we could even get close to it. But um, yeah, the one thing that I wanted to uh, address that you brought up there was 
whether what the timeline is going to be, because I feel like this is the most confusing thing that the Mass Effect team has kind of teased. It's just they keep teasing in the 2020 teaser trailer. They're zooming in on the Milky Way. You do hear a random, you know, arc six is away. So there is a little bit of Andromeda there. Mike Gamble, obviously, on Twitter after the trailer was, you know, released and all the Andromeda fans and, you know, were up in arms. And he was like, no, no, don't worry. We got you. And now recently, just, you know, the Andromeda distress signal detected, uh, actually using the date 2819. Um, yep. I feel like they're completely contradicting themselves but they they know what they're doing. Like, they, I don't think anything that they're doing is random. I think that they're all probably just, you know, behind their screens, kind of, you know, giving like a kind of a, a knowing smirk. Um, but I will say the one hint that we've got so far that probably gives us kind of an indication of when the timeline will be is probably including Garrus um, in the nightclub photo. Because I have seen some theories like, okay, like Garrus might have gotten into a cryopod and, you know, been shipped off to Andromeda. Um, I personally don't really see why he would kind of do something like that. So I think that what we're seeing in that nightclub is probably a nightclub in the Milky Way. And obviously Turians don't live for very long. Like they live for about as long as humans, I believe, like they're... Yeah. Their, their their maximum lifespan is up to like 120, I think, or maybe 150. Um, yeah, I think I think it's slightly above or slightly below, obviously depending on the individual. But the yeah, I, it, when when you talk about things like that with obviously Liara and Garrus more specifically, it yeah. then gets even more messier when we know that they haven't canonized an ending, and they have at the moment at least, and they have. You've also got the individual romances. Because different, yeah. there are obviously different endings and different outcomes with the romances, and yeah, it gets it gets real messy. Because then, what happens if, say, for example, Garrus goes to Andromeda and Lee, and then Shepard's not the protagonist, and Shepard's left behind, and the game is strictly in the far future? Oh, they would As never. Can you imagine? Like, maybe, I know, but the, if, if somebody romances Garrus, then they're just going to feel completely left out. And think well, that's not something I would do as Shepard. If you see what I mean, they, yeah, they would sort of 100%. go, oh, "I'd want to play with my Garrus." <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but that's what it is. Like, I think that I mean, Mike Gamble so many times on Twitter, and I keep going back to a lot of Mike Gamble stuff because obviously he's like the director for the next game. He's the executive producer. He's the franchise director of Mass Effect. So I view a lot of what he says as kind of an indication of where the Mass Effect team's mindset is at, you know? And there have been so many tweets where I think one one Mass Effect fan tweeted at him one time and he was like, oh, my son just started playing Mass Effect and he's worried yeah, that he yeah. won't be able to, you know, romance Tally. And he was like, you know, um, he, he didn't... He, it was kind of like a cheeky response where he was like, oh, you can always replay like the original games you know but yeah, i feel like he included a smiley face or something like, i think he could replay mass effect the the original trilogy or the legendary edition didn't he yeah say like that? he said something like that and i just i don't know though because to me just just based on stuff like that and being able to see garris and being able to see liara i don't see how they would kind of make those characters non-romanceable um so you know if shepherd is coming back which I mean, I, I I personally think that they are. Um, I just don't see how, you know, they they would they would kind of do something where they're they ship certain characters off to certain galaxies and, you know, or have Liara and Garrus be in the Milky Way, but then not have Shepard there and have a new protagonist able to romance them. Like, to to me, I think that the one thing that they can do to just make most fans happy is to allow us to get closure with our shepherd and our romance choice. Like I, I I think that the majority of fans would appreciate something like that. I know there are people that are like, no, let Shepard, you know, rest and stuff like that. But um I don't know. I, I think based on Paul's on my own channel anyway, I think the majority of people would be okay having Shepard come back. 
um, having it be in the Milky Way, being able to romance all of our old squad mates and, and, and stuff like that. So we'll see, though. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, who knows indeed? I mean, we're, we're in regards to Shepard coming back, I'm really torn. I'm in two mindsets. I, I'm honestly, I wouldn't, I know this is a very sort of uh, cop-out answer, but I would not mind if they went either way with it in terms of either Shepard comes back or they don't, because I'm in the mindset of the original trilogy exists and it is spectacular and I wouldn't change it for the world. And Shepard, if I want Shepard, Shepard's there. But at the same time, I would be really curious, both from my own personal standpoint and from a writing and game development standpoint, how they would bring Shepard back and what that would look like. That's obviously the million dollar question. Mm. That's what pretty much everyone going into the next game is asking. Like, is Shepard coming back? I mean, I remember watching the N7 Day uh, 2023 teaser. Do you know when yeah, they dropped like the basically the different thirds of it where they dropped like, oh, the yeah. first bit where it's walking? I remember looking at the back of the character's armor. Yep. And I literally said to my chat, I was like, this is Commander Shepard. They're I... about to reveal Commander Shepard. I genuinely thought the character was going to walk down the corridor, take the helmet off, and then you'd see the sort of red hair, yep. uh, Fem Shep, and then it would just like cut to Mass Effect will continue or a title reveal or something. But yeah, I had the it's... exact same thought. I, I, I saw the back of the armor. I pulled up like a look at this N7 armor that Shepard is wearing. It's clearly them. And then and then the turn happened. And, you know, I mean, I don't think it's Shepard, but yeah. yeah I, I feel I, like, I I... did you find that when you, when it kind of happened, when the, when you first kind of saw the, the last third reveal, what was your first emotion? Were you like super crushed? Because I remember feeling extremely confused. Um... Because they had to have known what they were doing. Like, they knew that everyone was going to think that the Shepard reveal was going to happen. Um, so I was genuinely so confused when we first saw the helmeted figure and it wasn't Shepard. I, I wasn't crushed, per se. I was a bit... I, I was a bit not let down. I was more so... I, I've got to be honest. I, I As uh, sort of we talked about, I the reveals came out very late in the uk it was like midnight 1 right. a.m like i think it went all the way up to i think 2 or 3 a.m and i was very tired and <laughs> basically struggling to stay Aww. awake and i think that sort of led it, my reaction was a bit worse because of that so because I, I was thinking like oh my god I st i've got to be honest part of me was thinking i i stayed up for that the thirty second teaser of an unknown character walking, but then when you when no you kidding. look back at it, you've got all these things that are just happening on screen. You've got the um I'm guessing you've you've seen it, the potential Krogan that's like yeah. in the shadows lurking at the very beginning. It's only on screen for like so two, random. Or two or three frames. No, yeah, I've seen the Krogan. I personally can't really tell whether it's definitively a Krogan, so Whenever I'm like theorizing on my channel and stuff, I don't usually include the fact that it it could be a Krogan. Um, but yeah, just the general vibe of the new N7 is so all over the place because um, I've said this before when I've when I've covered them, but the N7 has like this weird boots that look like they're like Gucci boots. Um, and like they have this strange trench coat, you know, like. That also functions as armor. Um, I just the the vibe is so all over the place for the new N seven that I quite honestly don't know what to think. I mean, I I don't think it's Shepard, but like the vibe of it, to be fair, like the original, the whole point of the original like pitch for Mass Effect was the Commander Shepard uh, is going to be a James Bond type esque character. They're going to mm. be a character who can go above and beyond the law. They can go into the sort of dark alleyways and basically get what they want by any means. And Mass Effect, I think, sort of lost that going into obviously the Reaper War, uh, sort of very late on. Obviously, it became a bit more, you know, about the war and Shepard right. being a hero. 
but then it's definitely something that Andromeda lost completely. Uh, obviously, it's a bit different because obviously you're a pathfinder in that. So uh, again, I'm not hating on Andromeda. I'm just you know stating it is sort of a different vibe there. But if with this new N7 operative or character, whoever, if they can tap re sort of re tap into the uh, early Spectre days for Mass Effect One, Mass Effect Two where you're maybe you know again you're going behind the council's back which again ties into the audio transmission where liara says about human defiance that mm. little quote there it all sort of adds up with perhaps maybe we're going to be a bit more of a badass in this next game sort of like how shepherd was and maybe it's going to focus more on politics and espionage and maybe we have more stealth options and things like that and it again opens a whole can of worms that's very much tinfoil hat speculation but yeah. unfortunately that is you know a lot of what we've got to go on at the moment we don't have a lot but what we do have is really interesting from 2020 all the way to now with this n7 operative i mean they're holding a brand new pistol which is very yeah. similar to I oh I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's one the of the predator? pistols from the wait what sorry the predator or yeah uh, mm, or I I think like... I went over I think in the Citadel DLC the um the the silencer gun I, I don't yes, know which one yes thank you yeah it's it's kind of it's kind of a mix of the again I'll 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 put it on screen I've got no idea the actual name of it at the <laughs> moment but the the sidearm from the set of DLC and there's also a pistol from Andromeda and it's kind of like a mix of those two but mm -hmm. it is its entirely own design and speaking of like the the design of the N7 operative because you sort of touched on it there I really like it. It kind of again. I know you don't play Destiny, but mm -hmm. I'll probably like send you a picture of this afterwards. But it looks pretty spot on to a particular armor set from Destiny. <laughs> so okay. If, if 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 anybody watching this is a Destiny fan, um, the Obsidian Mind helmet it looks pretty much obviously other than the detailing on the front, it looks pretty much identical in some ways, which is really odd. And then you've got the whole thing with the um. On the helmet at the N7 operative, the sort of round bit that then goes, you know, sort of round the helmet kind of looks like it could be referencing the N7 default armor from Mass Effect 2 and 3 mm -hmm. with how the, obviously, you know, the part that Liara picks up. And don't get me wrong, I do think that the, the part Liara picks up is specifically that armor from Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3, right. you know, the the... I, I guess what you'd say, like the, the just the default, helmet. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but again, it I I do think this is going to be our protagonist, whether or not it's Shepard. Ooh, I, I honestly don't know. I don't think it's Shepard. I mean, I do have uh, I, I guess a, a very different opinion because I do think the N seven is going to be evil. Um, but you know that's just because. The music for me, I think the one thing when I was watching it over and over and over again, I contrasted this um, between the music where Liara is picking up the N7 piece, you know, on the snowy planet in 2020, um, with the music that they played when viewing this N7 operative. And it's just, it's so dark, you know, they 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 pulled from the game. It was stuff like Eden Prime. It was the music from Aralac Company, Grunt's Mission. Um, there was yeah. even some stuff from like PB's when you first meet PB and Andromeda and just the way that they kind of put it together. I just, every time the N7 turns, it just, it, it doesn't feel like, you know, that heroic vibe, um, which I mean, you know, could be for a huge number of reasons. Like you said, could just be a kind of darker character, um, you know, more renegade style, more badass. Um, but yeah, I don't know. To me, I, I definitely don't think it's Shepard. Um, but I, I have a feeling that it's, that the N7 isn't a good character. Um, especially because once again, I'm referencing a Mike Gamble tweet, but Mike Gamble tweeted, not everything is what it seems or something like that. Yep. And I was just yep. that, that along with the, the really, really like evil kind of vibe music, um, 
as well as I think I referenced like the N7 collar, the high collar that's usually used for characters that are, you know, villainous or, you know, like uh, like characters like um, uh, like Dracula uh, used in like media and also like um, I think uh, the evil witch in Snow White or something like that. Generally, like putting all those things together, I, I am of the opinion that that the N7 is uh, is not a not a good guy. But it, it, it honestly, it could just be an an Arya or a Thane type character because those characters also kind of have that kind of aesthetic. Um, but yeah, I don't know. For, for me, the music is key and, and the music just gives me a really evil vibe. I, th I think that's like another thing that, like I said earlier, Bioware have always done well is the soundtrack and the ambiance and the the, you know, the little scores here and there. I, I, I agree with the, I think the referencing to the, I've got no idea what the actual theme's called, but it's just the, I think it is just PB's theme, but it's like the opening to PB's theme when you first meet her. And yeah. then you've got the, the bit from art, the sort of redone bit of Arlac Company that mm -hmm. is brilliant. And again i've got no idea i've got no idea if that's a krogan in the background but it would tie into that yeah but yeah the, i guess the n7 operative for, for me at least and this is going to absolutely cause kick kick the hornet's nest if you will in the <laughs> comments but the comment section <laughs> my favorite mass effect game is mass effect 2 i genuinely think that mass effect 2 is pretty much perfect i wouldn't i wouldn't change pretty much any part of mass effect 2 if i had to recreate it and i think it is one of the best video games ever made i would say mass effect 2 is in my top five and the whole point of mass effect 2 for me at least is mass effect 1 you definitely felt more of a hero but at the same time you are you know like the first human specter you sort of go behind the council's back a bit yeah. but i think that's done brilliantly and it's done even more so in mass effect 2 where you're working with cerberus because in mass effect 1 you don't really hear about cerberus you just hear a few quotes here and there and then obviously you have that one side mission uh where you actually meet ed for the first time in mass effect 1 and right luna yeah, again, the luna mission few... pardon the luna mission the when we have yeah, to go yeah. to the moon yeah yeah and the I guess it is that that feeling of being a bit more of a badass, bit of a renegade. Obviously, I think that if this is an evil character, they would have to be a separate antagonist. I don't think they would be the main character because, again, it well, I, I suppose it depends if Bioware bring back the Paragon Renegade system. I personally do think they will bring it back, like a tweaked version of it, because they did hear the... They they must have heard the outcry from Andromeda because Andromeda was a very sort of simplified choice system, wasn't it? Oh yeah, no, for sure. Um, I remember thinking, um, I was really confused when I first started playing Andromeda because I don't remember if um, you know, because I was playing in twenty twenty two. So when I was kind of like looking at all of the like Reddit comments and stuff like that back like after the fact i don't think anybody had a particular problem with the paragon renegade system like it, it seems like you know they also use it on merch like you know they have like paragon and renegade beanies yeah. paragon and renegade mugs and stuff like that which are still in the store so i am confused why they kind of made that choice um the only thing i can think is they tried to um because i'm currently going through dragon age for the first time the dragon age series also from bioware and it felt almost like they were trying to give players more options almost to give it more of like as opposed to just like a, a sci-fi feel like a very much like a sci-fi rpg similar to dragon age where you know like how they had like the professional response versus like the yeah. emotional <laughs> response and you know like it, it felt like they were just i don't know i don't know whether they were trying to give it more of a dragon age feel or what but to me you don't fix what isn't broken and I think the Paragon, Paragon and Renegade system are just so iconic to the series that they almost have to bring it back. Um, and but yeah, even like... Even recently with uh, Destiny 2, the, the crossover, uh, the emblems that are a part of that crossover that I think you can get for free separately, I'm not too sure because I haven't looked too much into that. The 
uh, two of the emblems are the Par- the Paragon and Renegade logos, and that again was only what three days ago. There you go. Yeah, so, I think it was released and then, last like you said, you've got week. All or, the yeah. merch as well. It's crazy. Yeah, like I, they, I think, like just even with that Destiny collab, I think they know they kind of have to go back to the roots a little bit. Um, yeah. I think something that they could easily do is almost give kind of make a tweak to the Andromeda system, um, but make sure that it has that Paragon Renegade feel um, where they could have like two different Paragon options and two different Renegade options, but still make it very obvious that like this is a Paragon response and this is a Renegade response, you know, because sometimes like especially I'm sure you've noticed as well, like the Paragon and Renegade responses between like Mass Effect 1 versus 2 versus 3, like were vastly different where, you know, in the first one, a renegade response, you would just straight up be mean to the person versus in Mass Effect 2, it kind of got like a bit more, you know, sarcastic, maybe it's still a little bit mean, but in three, they really changed it to be, you know, you were kind of just being more of a badass and, 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 uh, more snarky. Um, I feel like if they could kind of give like more options within a renegade response so you can either choose to be mean versus choose to be like a snarky sarcastic i think that could be a good way if they want to like provide more dialogue options to players um but yeah don't fix what isn't broke just just bring back paragon and bring back renegade that's what they already tried to do and (laughs) it didn't really again i don't i don't think the andromeda dialogue system's really bad or anything it's just if you compare it to what com- you know came before, it's just it is night and day difference. I think you're spot on with the um, I, I guess how it's progressed in the trilogy. Like at one point, you know, you've got Shepard, you know, threatening people by killing their entire race, yeah, and then yeah. the you've got being a little bit, a little bit more badass responses where yeah. it's not really hurting anyone. It's more just the the what the one renegade option that always pops into my head is during uh fane's recruitment mission you know where you've got like that random merc where you can either um let him go or you can i think it's you can throw him out of the window from like the top oh my goodness yes the one where you can (laughs) kick him i love that one yeah I love that one. And did you know, I think when I, um, when I was searching up stuff on like the Paragon and Renegade interrupts, I think that was the very first one that they developed, um, in Mass Effect 2 was the one where they, where you can kick somebody off the building. Um, yeah, I'd have to check that back, but I love that one. In all of my Paragon playthroughs, I, I insta click that one, (laughs) just shove them off the building. You know, I I do genuinely think that it will come back just because pretty much what we've said so far. I do think the you know the merch, the crossovers, and the fact that it is iconic. I think um, if Bioware wants inspiration for systems and games that have done it right, I would argue and say two game series that have done it right are uh, the Walking Dead's. Uh, so uh, the Telltale's Walking Dead where uh, it's like the walking dead i can't say that but there we go and as well as the i don't know if you've ever played the infamous series on playstation i have not um, no oh you need to play infamous it's so good i will it's, put it on my list <laughs> it's one of like the very best playstation exclusives there was like it, in, infamous 2 is one of the best playstation exclusives that has ever existed and then in, one's a bit rough, but it's because it came out during, I think it was like 20, so 2007, 2006. Oh, okay. The exact date, but it was, it's kind of like the first Mass Effect in some regards where it is a bit rough around the edges in right. certain regards. But um, actually, it's kind of exactly like the Mass Effect series. Like the first one's a bit rough around the edges, but amazing. Then two just completely refines everything and perfects it. And. Th- those are two franchises that could definitely by the way I could definitely look at to see how a paragon renegade like system is done because in infamous you basically have a good option a neutral option or a bad option and the story completely changes depending on your actions and i think that is something that is sorely missing from andromeda obviously there are choices in andromeda where you can you know kill someone or do something but it's just nowhere near on the same level but again speaking of which i wanted your take on this because this is a very 
sore point in the community to talk about and it's something that is again sort of i'd argue and say it's nearly as big as okay it's not, it's not as big as but it's on the same spectrum as will commander shepherd return yeah will Sally return will garris return that sort of thing but the the fact that we might get or bioware have actually somewhat teased at potentially getting a dual galaxy map or either that or it's separated in some way or maybe it's just a handful of planets from the milky way and a handful of planets from andromeda then it's something for them to maybe do in sequels sort of like how obviously in the mass effect trilogy you've got certain planets that are only available in two for example then you've obviously got planets such as tachunka which appear in two and three and then you've got planets that like well not a planet but a location like the citadel that appears in all three games so again like what what do you think about bioware potentially having both galaxies i mean obviously you've got the bit from the teaser trailer where you've got both galaxies shown on screen with panning away from andromeda and mm -hmm. towards the milky way and obviously zooming into the milky way and then all the tweets from mike gamble <laughs> regarding andromeda and then the <laughs> everything that we've covered more recently with n7 day uh last year going into andromeda with a distress signal but yeah what would you what do you think about that yeah it's such an interesting discussion because one it would probably be the first time in any game that i had ever played that a world map like the overall world map would be on such a large scale um because i think like when i was playing through andromeda the one thing that I did find was a little bit um, clunky was whenever I wanted to go just kind of click on a planet and figure out where to look to, they kind of had the system where, you know, the entire Tempest would kind of zoom in and, you know, you would kind of fly uh, toward the planet, which was really cool at first. And I really enjoyed that. But obviously, like in the whole span of like the Helios cluster, um, trying to click on every planet, it, it did feel a bit overwhelming in a sense. And that's just with one section of one galaxy, right? Like we didn't even see the whole Andromeda um, galaxy. We were just in one cluster. Yeah. Um, so I think personally that if they had to do a whole, like the entire Milky Way and the entire Andromeda galaxy, it would feel so overwhelming. Um, however, they are teasing, you know, that both are probably going to be involved somehow. Um, I am of the mindset that with all the teasers we have seen so far, there has been more Milky Way things that have been hinted, uh, like in the teaser trailer in 2020, you're zooming in on the Milky Way. Yes, you can see Andromeda in the background, um, but you're very clearly zooming in on the Milky Way and kind of diving into, you know, the stars and the, you know, the interstellar clouds and stuff. Um, and then even with the recent, the, the nightclub scene, I personally think that that nightclub is in the Milky Way. Um, obviously, with Garrus being there, I don't think that, you know, I think I do think that it's closer to the post Reaper War timeline. Um, and you only see one Angara there. So I don't think it's Andromeda. Um, so I think with all of the things we've been seeing, the potential Ilium hints, you know, in the concept art, the potential Thessia hints in the concept art, it will probably take place in the Milky Way. Now, as to how Andromeda will be involved, I do think they are going to do something that is a little bit, you know, not time travel mumbo jumbo necessarily, but I do think that they will find a way to somehow bamf back. Um, you know, would I think my prevailing theory is somehow they'll they'll use either like the the black hole in the middle of the Helios cluster. Uh, there's a bunch of like scourge things that if you look in the codex on the Scourge, there's a lot of time altering properties, which I don't think is a coincidence. Like I do think they intentionally did that. Um, and yeah, potentially even like things with exploding stars and wormholes, because that is concept art that has been made um, for the game, you know, under under the, the, uh, the project title, I think they're calling it Bowie. Um, which everybody figured out is for the next Mass Effect. So yeah, yeah. I personally think it's probably going to be set in the Milky Way. 
Um, I could see there being something happening at the beginning of the game where you're kind of in the Andromeda cruise perspective and you see something strange happen and they end up in the Milky Way. Um, obviously, extremely far-fetched theory that I have not really any specific evidence to back up uh, that thought. But um, yeah, I, I do think they're gonna they're gonna do something strange that we're not expecting that probably Andromeda 2 was going to address, um, but we just never got around to it. So some, some, something funky is going to happen, but I, I do think Milky Way uh, centering the plot and specifically the characters as well around a Milky Way story makes the most sense. I mean, exactly. It's, it's drawing in the veteran fans as well as the casual. I mean, obviously you're going to have some Andromeda fans that are going to feel a bit hard done by it. I think Bioware have really got to strike that balance of getting all three on board. Obviously, the casual audience above everything is going to matter most, unfortunately. That's just that's, that's just the way it works. But obviously, I mean, I, I, I do think that getting the veteran fans in order is going to be fine. But again, we can already see that from the fact that Liara's back and... We've got all of these things being teased, such as the GEF. I think Bioware know exactly what they're doing so far. Like I said, Eddie, I reckon Mike Gamble, the rest of the team, are sitting there laughing at us, saying, "Oh yeah, you know, like the the whole thing with the Ralloy and the Angaran in the club." <laughs> it's <laughs> they, ridiculous. It, it's not actually any of those things. <laughs> no, yeah, they're definitely. I feel like they just pull up every like tweet that we have and all these videos that we make and just have it in a meeting room. Just put it on and just laugh at us because like they are just they are masterful at messing with people, though. Like, you know, all of us thinking that it's Shepard on N7 Day and, you know, randomly putting Garrus in a thing and, you know, having potentially Liara at the back talking to an Angara. Like, I, I, I just hope that they're having a good time and, you know, <laughs> having a good laugh at, at our expense because... It's, it is it is tough working without a lot of new news coming out, but I do hope that they're making solid progress, you know? Like, we've we've had it said that they're still in pre-production, and obviously with all the stuff with Dreadwolf, and they're really trying hard to, to get that shipped out, but yeah, like, it's... I, I'm so ready for when they finally start releasing some concrete details... And we can all just get super excited and both the Mass Effect team and us can kind of be on the same page. Like, I think that's when it's going to be very fun. Yeah, I mean, the gaming industry at the moment is in a very, very bad place in terms of with jobs. So I do hope Bioware, in terms of the, the actual people themselves, you know, people on the ground floor are fine. Like the artists, the animators, the, game, the actual people in the trenches. Sure. I hope they're all doing great and we all know they can make great stuff and the, the the people that they have hired that they've gone publicly so far with in the past sort of three years I, i'm not seeing any bad names there i think the i'm really blanking on a name again i'll have it on screen but the one of the lead writers and people working on the next game story i think it's one of like the sort of head honchos for the creative team is someone who has worked on the guardians of the galaxy game that came out yes. a couple years ago which if you haven't played that is actually really good that was but i i did unfortunately play the avengers game <laughs> by um by square and i just didn't really like that so uh, after i played i was kind of thinking like guardians would be like the same i guess sort of vibe as that game but no guardians of the galaxy was really good i got to play that on ps5 and yeah if that's any indicate again that's another sci-fi game where you've got a sort of merry band of squad mates on a sort of space opera sort of story. And obviously you know, it's a bit different with Guardians of the Galaxy, but I do think, again, that expertise comes in helpful with creating Mass Effect. And again, I really hope Bioware are currently having a good time. And I do know how difficult it is. I've actually got a friend who uh, did work at Activision Blizzard and was actually a part of the recent layoffs. Oh man, that sucks. And l luckily, they've been uh, they've been able to find work elsewhere. But I know a lot of people haven't, and mm. you know that that's I think a, a lot of people do forget when they're talking about games or something they love, whether it be movies, 
they sort of go into it and sort of think, well, why haven't we had it announced yet properly? Where's the release date? Oh, they're being really lazy, that sort of thing. Where I think people forget a lot of the times that it's human beings working on this and, mm. you know, a lot, a lot of decisions do unfortunately come from sort of higher up with corporate, with EA. And I, I do think that Bioware will need to obviously they can't avoid it but i do think bioware will need to look at what happened at andromeda with what going into the next game but in regards to what they've shown us so far i do think there is a finite line that they haven't they're nowhere near crossing yet but they will need to start showing more of this more information and more on this game not soon but I, I get well i get it depends on when the game is actually slated to come out internally and how far along they are with development and whatnot but they will need to start showing stuff at some point they can't just keep giving us you know very cryptic blog posts and yeah. concept art forever i do i'm really looking forward to i'm really hoping that what they did was similar to andromeda where they give us like a really cool cgi trailer they drop the title and then maybe at a like EA Play or EA live stream or Mass Effect's own, I don't know, like a Mass Effect Direct, if you will. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to the ones where it's like the developers talking about what's going on with the game, how they designed particular things with the combat system, Paragon Renegade system, the story, the characters. And then I really like those trailers before a game's properly announced, you know, where you've got like the developers, it's like an interview. And you can see yeah. on the monitors in the background the game running or yeah. like little images from the game. For sure. I, I'm really, because they did that for Andromeda and they did it really well. I unfortunately wasn't, you know, like into YouTube back then. But if I was, I would have, I would have been all over that. For sure. No, yeah. Like it's such a fine line, right? Because uh, just going back to what you were talking about with, you know, fans just wanting to get information and not getting the information as fast. Um, the Mass Effect team definitely, they didn't like shoot themselves in the foot, but they kind of put themselves on the back foot because they gave us such an epic trailer in 2020 and we kind of yeah. hadn't had something <laughs> of that equivalent, you know, like of, of that magnitude since then. Um, and then like, we had already mentioned the state that they're in with Dreadwolf and stuff like that. So, um, I also think it's important to mention that the state of AAA games right now feels so much like it's either a bust or it's a hit and i feel like that's a huge problem because like you mentioned with andromeda if they have like a bad clip running around of a character like kind of waddle walking or the my face is tired and you know the character's face isn't moving and stuff um i think that it could really hurt it so I, I'm definitely looking yeah. forward to all the stuff you said, like they really need to get the marketing right. Um, and I also do hope, though, that they they kind of um, don't subscribe to like, you know, this this boom or bust mentality for a triple A game. Um, it's going to be extremely hard, obviously, for them to to kind of I'm sure they'll use Dreadwolf as their kind of litmus test as all right, like, how did we do here? Can we take that process and kind of apply it to what we're going to do next? Um, but again, the more time that passes, the more fans are going to be anticipating this and are going to put such high expectations on this that I unfortunately think it will be either a boom or a bust. And not just, like, I think you would also said, like, they can't afford, like, a 6 out of 10, like, I feel like they almost can't even afford like a like a seven and a half out of ten, you know. Like it, it has to be high, high quality. Um, and and all the stuff that you said, I really hope that they 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 really hammer home. Just you know, they show the behind the scenes. They show um how they you know like the the, the thoughts that went into the storytelling and um the animation and just a bunch of community uh, driven stuff. So hopefully it'll kind of you know alleviate that aspect that they've had in the last few years of hey we're going to be cryptic with you guys and not tell you guys anything like it, it's going to be awesome when again everybody's on the same page and we can all just get super super hyped about this thing that um who knows who who knows when it'll come out but but hopefully 
hopefully within this decade, <laughs> which is a really sad, I mean, a sad statement to make. But oh god, yeah. No, I mean, I when I started doing Mass Effect content, I gen I kept on making videos like at the very beginning saying that oh, I think the game's going to be twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five, at oh, latest twenty twenty six, and then now that we've had some of the information from behind the scenes that has sort of leaked out, unfortunately, and then you've got. So this is a bit more, obviously less reliable with the stuff with the insiders staying, you know, twenty twenty nine and right, you know, stuff like that, and you know, the stuff from Jeff Grubb, for example. The if it is twenty twenty nine, that game better be damn good. Yeah, like it that's the problem, it right? Be Mass Effect two, Mass Effect three levels of good, which is so much pressure. Up. Like, that is exactly. so much pressure. Like, it would have to, in my mind, the more this goes on, they would have to release something of a quality that wins Game of the Year and is not a question. You know, like, it has to be epic quality. And this is coming off the heels of, you know, technically Andromeda. Like, yes, the Legendary Edition, but that was just a remaster. Um, you know, like, to go from an Andromeda to potentially one of the best games of the year, like, that is a lot of pressure and um oh also i i remembered the the um the senior narrative director that you had mentioned for marvel's guardians of the galaxy is mary demarl um thank you I, yeah i always remember her surname but never her full name and i can never ever remember it unless i you know, obviously see it i'll yeah when we have this as a video i'll probably put it on screen yeah yeah, yeah for sure I think the two biggest examples was something where something like this has happened is Cyberpunk 2077 and uh, if you're a Square Enix fan, I'm going to lump them together because they were both announced at the same time and came out within a year was Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Yes. I know a little bit also happened with Final Fantasy 15 where it was called Final Fantasy 13 Versus at one point, but oh, yeah. those games got announced way too early way too early and then nothing came out all the little tidbits here and there because i was on the hype train for all three of those titles less so cyberpunk but more so uh kingdom hearts because obviously i'm a childhood fan of disney and kingdom yeah. hearts and final fantasy i i grew up with final fantasy 7 it was one of my first games on the original playstation i just love you know, all three. And I remember sitting there just thinking, gee, that's just so, like, there's so little information coming out. It's like, why have they revealed the game? I mean, look at Mass Effect. It, 2020, they revealed the game. And then 2021, the, Le the Legendary Edition came out. If the game had then come out 2022 or 2023, oh it would have been genius marketing because yeah. it would have been, well, okay, um, here's the reveal for the next Mass Effect game to get you hyped. Uh, arguably the biggest platform to do so nowadays in gaming, because obviously E3 is no longer a thing, really. Right. Um, well, it's actually not now, is it? It's yeah, it's dead, gone. But, yeah. Yeah, and which is really sad, but mm. <laughs> I don't want to think too much about that. I'll yeah. Crying, but, <laughs> oh, I'm joking, but the in regards to that, it would have just been genius marketing because he would have had 2020 2021 and then maybe one or two year gap for marketing and you would have then got all of the old fans back because they well here's a remastered collection of one two and three which are arguably some of the best games of all time and arguably you know one of the best trilogies in gaming mm -hmm. and and then to follow that up with okay here's a new title whether it's a sequel to andromeda sequel to mass effect 3 a entirely new take on the game in general would have just been a smart marketing move and now that they're you know come, well, you know three and a half years later you know 2024 now it's it's crazy it's crazy and i honestly if it is 2029 then i really can't see the mass effect series surviving because if you remember ea said in 2017 it was late 2017 or 2018 that they had actually put the mass effect series on ice indefinitely mm. which is funny because it, this was back in the days of ea saying that they weren't going to make single player games right and they were going to go full live service and then anthem uh, happened 
Yeah, then Anthem happened. I think uh, then uh, it was Battlefront One and Battlefront Two, but more so the controversy with Battlefront Two, right? With the microtransactions, that all happened. And then mm. I think uh, I'm trying to think of the games that came out around that time. It was like God of War, um, Insomniac, Spider Man, uh, on top of like obviously quite a few more releases like Ghost of Tsushima, right? Yeah, Horizon, Horizon that, was what I was going to say. Yeah, Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild. The list goes on and on. And all of these then games came out to prove EA wrong, and EA seem to have done a bit of a 180 now, where they're going into games like the recent Star Wars games by Respawn. I mean, yeah, okay, obviously they've got things like Apex Legends, and I'm really surprised we've never had a full-on crossover event or collab with Apex Legends. I know you can get the weapon charms. Um, the end. You can get like Paragon Renegade. I think it's N seven as well as a little chibi, like couple of Shepherd ones. But there's oh. no, like, there's no character skins or anything, which is really weird because they recently did a collab with Final Fantasy seven where you can have like Cloud and Nerif and Tifa costumes. It's like, well, you you've got Dragon Age and Mass Effect here, and yeah. you don't have to go through all of the logistical nightmares of licensing because for square enix more more so than other companies are notoriously known for being very i guess uh tight-lipped and very close right. to their franchise they were right. i mean the colossal effort it, it took for them to get cloud and sephiroth and sora in smash bros was something but oh my <laughs> god so, little tangent here imagine if we get mass effect in the next smash bros game that would oh be weird. my i don't think that's ever gonna happen but <laughs> i would freak out like yeah I, it would be an insta buy first of all i mean it didn't um uh oh shoot i'm blanking on his name the 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 fellow that always does the the smash updates didn't he say something like they weren't planning to do another smash or was that the mario kart the mario kart no, announcement so they've got um there's there's a rumor that the next game is going to be 10 they've definitely got mario kart because mario kart 8 deluxe is the only game in history that has been consistently in the top 10 since it has come out on the, yeah and that's coming out on the wii u with the original mario kart 8 so they're which definitely did not do making well. another mario kart they just they just recently finished mario kart tour which is like the mobile game and then right. they did obviously the dlc for that so mario kart will be fine but uh smash is a different story i know uh sakurai who's like the main developer the creator that's the him sort of founder yep. Of smash, he yep. may be retiring but smash is so big as a money maker i i remember I, i've been on the hype train for every smash since brawl and yeah. for every single nintendo direct nintendo event nintendo at e3 treehouse live whatever it is if there is a Smash Bros. game in development and people know that it's in development, that will take priority over everything to the point where entire Nintendo Directs in sort of the recent six or seven years have been tailored around character announcements. So it's Smash, right. Smash yeah. Mario Kart will definitely come back in some way. They make too much money for them to for stop. For sure. I do well, think hopefully they have. Would be like a really interesting character. I did... So I don't know how plausible this rumor is because this is just a rumor this is not me saying like this is confirmed <laughs> for playstation all-stars on the ps3 commander shepherd was actually on one of the lists for internally with potentially being considered as a character instead oh. they actually did opt for isaac clark from dead space which was oh. obviously EA, ea as well and if you look at like Isaac's moveset, a lot of that track could like translate to Shepard. <laughs> to I honest. love that. I love that so much. No, like if Shepard was in Smash, I mean, you know, like we're always talking about like marketing and stuff or, you know, how to market best market Mass Effect and stuff like that. Bringing Shepard to Smash would be such a home run out of the park move that they could do. Um, I'm not too familiar with like the logistics of you know which uh, franchises yeah the, the the smash team because obviously it's it's all japan pretty much exactly uh, they don't tend to work with western developers and composers it's only a few times where they've done it they've had to go through like the japanese side of things which obviously ea is more pretty much western completely yeah. so 
it would be difficult for them to do. But I think I think going on to that topic for them marketing the next game, they need to start ramping up these crossovers. I think the Destiny 2 crossover was genius. Unfortunately, it's come at a time in the Destiny community where uh, there's a lot of animosity and ill will towards the developers because there was mm. the whole thing where Sony bought them and yeah, yeah etc. Right. All the controversies that have recently gone on, but which unfortunately happened near at the same time in the same couple of months. But they need to really start ramping this up. Like I said, if they look at their own live services with EA, if they could get Shepard, Liara, Garrus costumes and skins and more weapon charms and camos in Apex Legends, which again because it's both internal EA, that would probably be really easy to do. And mm-hmm. same for Dragon Age Dreadwolf as well. And then maybe they need to look, like, look you know, elsewhere at what's doing well, like Fortnite and Fall Guys and you know, other live services. I feel like that would be probably the best way because people might look at that. They might see the crossover, for example, a Shepard skin in Fortnite or a Liara skin in Fortnite or something. 100%. They then I see would. that and go, I don't know where that's from. Where's that from? I'm going to go check that out. A hundred percent. And then I know a lot of people are reacting to this thing that's a big deal, but I don't know why it is. And then they look at it and they go, and then that that's how they get into the Mass Effect series. Again, it's, it's one of those. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like you were just talking about like Fortnite having, you know, Shepard, Garrus, Liara, like that to me Shepard is. Shepard dance emote in Fortnite. Oh it, my God. Gonna, it needs to it happen. That is so smart, dude. Yeah. Like that a hundred percent. It, it needs to be a thing. You could do so much. You could have uh, the Normandy as a glider. Um, yep. You know, like there's Only just, cool. you could have Garrus in Fortnite sniping someone. Like the amount of clips and, you know, just fun crossover things that you could do would just be so genius. But yeah, like you mentioned, super smart idea to also do Fall Guys because just the skins and, and all of that stuff, like it's basically just free marketing for your game. I mean, obviously it's it's not free because there's a bunch of licensing things. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like it's it's how you you grow the franchise and and stuff like that. So, yeah, again, just ugh, I, I can't believe we're going to be years away from it. I don't think because we were touching on the, the release date a little bit. I don't think it'll be as late as 2029. Um, looking at the past, like the from Mass Effect 3, to the legendary edition um mass effect 3 was 2012 and then andromeda was five years later in 2017 and then the legendary edition dropped five years after that in 2021 so back when i first played it in 2022 i was eyeing you know potentially like a 2026 but we're two years out from that already and we're not even like they're not even in production right so I think that what they need to start considering, and I'm sure what they're already doing is when they are marketing it, it definitely, like you had mentioned, needs to bring in that casual fan because it's going to be like potentially six, seven, eight years after they last released Mass Effect game. And a casual fan is not going to remember, you know, like the, the, the stuff in the Legendary Edition, let alone the stuff from Andromeda. Like, there are going to be people that play this game, the next upcoming game, that don't even know what Andromeda is, right? Because, like, if you think about it, like, let's just hypothetically, let's say that, like, somebody was born in, like, 2012, for example, and then, you know, they're kind of hitting their teens uh, around the time, you know, like, in if, uh, if they were born in 2012, 2022, then they're probably around 11, like, maybe they pick up the Legendary Edition, but there's going to be an entire generation of people and just kids and teens that don't have the backstory of, you know, the Andromeda stuff who maybe will play Legendary Edition before this one. But yeah, from a marketing perspective, they do have to pull in people that don't know what Mass Effect is. So doing things like all the collabs with Fortnite, Fall Guys, like all these games that are just at their peak and what, you know, teens and kids are playing right now would be super, super smart because who knows when they're going to release this, right? And and they're going to have to somehow keep that hype going, um, especially for just the casual person that doesn't know anything about the franchise. Exactly. I mean, I, I one of my best friends, uh, I think it was in 2022 when Mass Effect was free on PlayStation. 
he that was his introduction to Mass Effect. He said, it, I, "I I was basically hyping it up for him and said, you 'You've got to play this. It's one of you know, it's one of my favorite trilogies in gaming.'" And then he played it and fell in love with it. Okay, not not to the same level as us, but he he actually. And then he then got into on YouTube looking at stuff for the next game. And then as soon as I told him, well, it's probably not you know, it's probably five or six years out. He he sort of went ah right. And then I've never heard him mention Mass Effect again. So again, it's yeah. I think their release schedule has done some damage, and I think it will do continuous damage until we hear more about this next game and what it is. And who knows? We may even be on the next gen systems for PlayStation Six and whatever the hell Xbox is doing yeah, next. Yeah, I definitely when this think game comes out, which is bonkers to even think about but that is that is plausible i mean obviously there's the whole recent stuff that's happened with xbox where they're sort of it's very weird where they're putting pretty much every xbox exclusive on playstation i saw obviously not not at the same time but they're like slowly rolling their games out by the way if anybody is wanting to play an awesome game hi-fi rush made by bethesda is brilliant it's awesome. very much like uh, it's kind of like Devil May Cry meets Bayonetta meets Guitar Hero. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's a very if, if you'd if you would ask me like what video game would you want to make if you were like a lead developer that would be it. That is insane. <laughs> like, that is awesome. Yeah, I, I I'm just trying to picture how those three specific things can mesh and like, count me as in the it's curious a flash club. Game, but it's like it's a rhythm game where you've oh. got like. But it's a hack. It's a three D hack and slash. It's very much what in the world. It, it harkens back to like the early PS two platformer days, like oh. Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter. Okay. But characters and the writing is brilliant. Funny enough, it's actually made by the Evil Within devs and even has a crossover with the Evil Within. Oh, okay. And um, what was their recent game? Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo or whatever it was called. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't play that one. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't play it either. But the um, I, it it has crossovers with both of those, and it's by a developer that normally does horror games. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the g- g- going back to Mass Effect, though, I think the only way that Bioware could proper, like, the only two ways they can justify the sort of this weight being the song is if this next game is something truly special, or if they have something else in the works. I don't think they'll ever, ever do this because I think they want people to forget that it even exists to a certain extent with the casual audience. But if they did do a port of Andromeda to current gen, oh. um, obviously le- less so meaning for Xbox, but more so for PlayStation, uh, maybe they add some new content. I mean, the a plus side there would maybe if the game, for example, releases in 2027, and then obviously mm. you've got Dreadwolf maybe coming out this year or next year. And then maybe in 2026, they like a, a port of Andromeda that has new content that teases the next game story mm. and where it's going, maybe including like a end credit scene or something or something to do with the Corian arc. That'd yeah. Be interesting. Yeah, no, I definitely think that um it's it's such a it's such a fine line. I think that one thing that you said with it's probably going to be on the next gen consoles um i had seen a tweet recently i i don't know i think it might have been a day or two ago where they said that the playstation 5 was in the latter stages of its life and yeah. i can't quite remember when did the when did the ps5 release was it 2020 or it was, tw- it was uh november 2020 right and they they said around that time i think it was early 2021 that they wanted this was both microsoft and sony sort of said this the same statement separately right. i think it was sony said it first then microsoft sort of copied them afterwards so sort of. <laughs> but they said that they wanted the console cycle for the ps5 to be eight eight to ten years but they more so leaned on eight right so i think that 2028 is sort of a reasonable date they may even push it forward but we, we don't we don't know yet again a lot of things can happen in the space of two to three years or even this year so i mean yeah. there's the whole thing that sony apparently said they don't really have many big exclusives coming out this year so 
it could be you know something that they want to maybe push a PlayStation 5 Pro or a PlayStation 6. I mean, the whole thing I mentioned very early on into this discussion was Andromeda came out and was the big game that Sony were using to tease and, I guess, market the PS4 Pro. Yeah. So <laughs> and then look what happened. The same thing here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking, right? Because if just hypothetically, if they were looking at a PlayStation 6 release in 2028, maybe Mass Effect tries to be the title game for a 2028 release. Because um, assuming, I, I assume they're going to release Dreadwolf this year. I I would be absolutely shocked if they delay it another year after all the delays that it's already been through. Um, I then a it maybe being like early 2025, you know, like February, January, February, March. Yeah, maybe yeah. Very early. Are you very yeah, early, yeah, though. It would have to be like a very early release, you know, like where we yeah. know all like we've seen all the trailers and we've seen like all the stuff that we need to know before buying it. Right. Um, but yeah, like I could easily see because I think the Switch 2, is it rumored to be uh, debuting or being hinted at? in a direct this year because that oh, would dictate God. kind of the other like as soon as one falls right as soon as like a switch 2 is announced that's definitely going to change the timeline on like a playstation and xbox um so yeah, I've, I've that could push the schedule up i've been following the nintendo stuff like a hawk just because when when i first started doing youtuber uh, sorry youtube i was basically a nintendo youtuber for like news and stuff so right I, I, i've also got a lot you know love of nintendo so the next console um, it's really messy with where things are going it was rumored to be a direct that was going to be this week but then what happened was essentially in the past month there's been loads of trailers that you'd usually get in a direct just dropped on twitter mm. like we had the princess peach trailer the splatoon right. dlc and um i think it was Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Basically, all their big first party games had trailers that dropped this week in some way, shape, or form. Mm. And insiders are coming out now and saying, like, really, we're talking really reliable ones now that, are, that are basically have a flawless track record. They've come out and said that it's just going to be a partner direct. So at some point, early sort of Q1, Q2 this year, we are going to get next Switch announced or, or some kind. The rumors spec wise is it's going to be similar specs to a PS4 Pro because the end of the day people mm. have to remember it is a handheld. Mm -hmm. If it was the quality of a PS5, then it would be like oh jeez, a thousand dollars, like one thousand yeah. five hundred dollars retail, which Nintendo don't do. They obviously typically do cheaper because that, mm. that's how they get into the market, but. I could definitely see. I'm really surprised that actually no one's talking. No one really ever talks about this. I'm shocked that the Legendary Edition never came to Switch, even oh, if it was just really? like a cloud download. Well, I'm wouldn't really it, wouldn't it just be? Um, I'm sure it was more in line with the the developers would have to spend time porting the system again onto the Switch format, right? I'm not too familiar. I know that you're a lot more familiar with like game dev style things and like the programming side of things but wouldn't it take a little bit more work or i guess if you already have the playstation and the xbox controls in place exactly. is it that much of a difference to do to just change the inputs to, to switch controls well in, input wise you've also got to remember that on pc you can use switch controllers and oh, that, that's true that on you know all of that so input wise is fine i think it's more plus you've also got the fact that developing your game for a cartridge is actually easier and developing your game for a compact disc or you know, oh, okay. like a Blu-ray or 4K, so you know. But yeah, just I'm I'm shocked it never came to Switch. I was sort of expecting it to come maybe 2022, 2023, because mm. Nintendo usually do do that. Plus the fact that Mass Effect 3 was on the Wii U, that was right. one of their big like Wii U like third party titles that they heavily marketed. But um, right, well maybe. Yeah maybe there could be like a switch to announcement and then they announce that maybe on that type of system legendary oh, could edition could be it, that would be crazy get the like proper reveal in a nintendo direct i think that would be like the most unlikely of places to get it I would, oh no i, I don't mean it. the I next game 
I don't mean the next game. I just mean like a legendary edition coming to Switch 2 announcement. Definitely not. <laughs> that would oh, be so I, funny. Uh, <laughs> well, it's it's rumored that the Switch 2 is apparently going to get Final Fantasy 7 Remake and Rebirth. Are you so, serious? Okay, okay. That's again, crazy. That, that's come from like reliable sources. It's not just like some guy on, you know, some guy on Reddit yeah, yeah. or 4chan. That's actually come from, you know, so I could definitely, if if Rebirth comes to Switch 2, I, I can definitely see the next Mass Effect game coming to Switch 2 again. Oh my goodness. Um, I think it would be one of those situations where I don't think, I think if it came day and day with the other consoles and PC, then I think alarm bells would be going off. But in terms of sort of how they do it with other franchises, where they release it on like PlayStation PC first, and then consoles and whatnot first, and then uh, and then like maybe a year later they get a Switch port. I could definitely, you know, I'd, I'd definitely be on board with that. Mm. But at the end of the day, more, more Mass Effect for people who potentially haven't played it would be great. Um. I, you know, th thankfully Stadia is not a thing anymore. <laughs> so no, my goodness. <laughs> they, they can sort of hopefully leave cloud gaming out of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, cloud gaming's big. It's probably going to get better in terms of the technology with everything Microsoft's doing in that front. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, for some reason, like it keeps popping in my popping up in my head. But I, I really do think that the next Mass Effect game is. It's going to be something special. I think it's more just the, the I I don't know how to describe it. It's just like the air surrounding mm, the game. I think it's the vibe. Since, yeah, it's just like the general vibe just seems completely different. I think the, uh, the reveal trailer really set the tone. With again, I'm gonna keep going on about it, but that music, oh, mm. that music was so good, and mm. that's really set the tone. The things going forward, I think, you know, with Liara, the guest, yeah. this new N7 protagonist, it's an air of mystery, an air of uh, cryptic teasers and hints with binary code and yeah. uh, audio to decipher and translate and weird static images and audio background static and things like that and things like little hints here and there. It really does lead me to believe that this next game will be like almost espionage themed or stealth themed or something. I think that would be very much a stark contrast to what was in Mass Effect 3, where it's all out galactic warfare, which again, I'm not saying is a bad thing at all, but, right. you know, it's it's really going to be interesting to see where the hell Bioware go from here. They, like, like we've said throughout the entire video, the they have dug themselves into a little bit of a hole with the marketing and the timeline and all of the teasers on Twitter with, is it in, is it in Andromeda? Is it in yeah. Milky Way? Is it in both? Is it in Neva? I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> is it I, in just I, a I different galaxy? Milky Way though, but, sorry, what was that? No, I was just going to say, that would be the most, it would be the funniest reverse Uno card to just say they're not even going to put it in the Milky Way and it's just in a completely different galaxy. Like, oh God, yeah. <laughs> that would be nightmarish scenario. Oh, man. The, the initiative went to a different galaxy. Yay! As well, yes. <laughs> and, and what you've all been waiting for, you're going to get to play as Ryder again. Oh, man, it, that would be just horrific. Um, But yeah, like, I, I agree. It's been it's been a weird mix of the vibes have been off the charts um, and it, it keeps me like wanting more. Like I, I, I'm really, really looking forward to N7 Day this year, especially once like hopefully Dreadwolf's marketing is well underway because they said they were going to release something in summer, I think. So they'll have a bit of time for that to digest. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm just I, I look forward to to just whatever the heck they are going to drop next because like you said with the 2020 trailer like the vibes were so good and i just i i sometimes have the uh the legendary edition i don't know if you've ever heard the the music from the legendary edition trailer yeah. um yeah i have that on like my spotify playlist whenever it comes on i just i have to stop and listen to it like i i really think they understand like the the impact that Mass Effect has um, on anyone that has played it, and I, I I 
they, they keep getting the vibrates. They keep getting the vibrates. They're, I think they're, they're cryptically ticking all the boxes that they need to tick. But uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing more. Whatever happens this N7 day, I am just going to be very, very excited for it. I think they're definitely like setting the tone right and they somewhat to, uh, well, I, I guess with how it's coming across so far they definitely seem to understand the impact it's had on you know everyone really I mean all you need to do is again look at the other day, the other day I don't know if you saw the trailer for the Destiny collab where it had loads of little easter eggs to yeah. the entire Mass trilogy where it had like the the elevator scene for yeah. example at the end and they had like the Liara Warlock using, so in the game it's called Void, but obviously that's meant to obviously be mimicking the bi biotic ability. Right, yeah. And it, it's things like that. They definitely understand. I know that was more the Bungie devs than Bioware, but Bioware would have had to have had some level of input with that trailer. Definitely. Or any, you know, the content. No, and yeah, the definitely. That all, all the content they've gone with is trilogy and not Andromeda. I think the only Andromeda crossover we've had is with The Sims Four. I and, think uh, so. Oh man, I'm not too familiar with The Sims, so I'm not too sure. Yeah, it was just like they they just dropped some cosmetic things. I think it was like N7 t-shirts, Paragon Renegade t-shirts, and then okay. there was like an Andromeda initiative one or a few a few different shirts that you can get in game or something, but. I think other than that, we've had obviously No Man's Sky with the Normandy, right? Uh, being a yeah. uh, freight shuttle that you can get in the game. Then obviously mm -hmm. Destiny, where you're getting all three classes and an ED Go shell, which I thought was cool. Then you're getting a Mako themed Sparrow and a Normandy themed ship, which is fantastic. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's awesome. And then um, obviously the emblems and things like that and yeah like i said i think they just need to really start you know i i wouldn't say kickstarting the marketing now because i think it would be a bit unfair and a bit suicidal on dreadwolf's standpoint yeah. yeah and the fact that obviously we know that they're basically doing the same thing they did with inquisition where mm -hmm. a lot majority of their team is going to move from dreadwolf to the next mass effect game mm -hmm. and you know that that is both exciting and terrifying because then it all depends on Dreadwolf's reception and how that game turns out. But at the moment, I do have somewhat, you know, some faith in Bioware. I do think some of that faith over the years has dwindled with, uh, you know, Andromeda, Anthem, and then you know, the layoffs and other things. But again, I do think Bioware can pull it back. All they need to do is just release two really good games, which is obviously easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> again all they need to do is listen to the fans they need to look at their entire history not just the original trilogy they need to look at andromeda what worked what didn't work what can we bring back what can we reference maybe we maybe it is just a milky way game and andromeda's purely referenced in the codex entries again we've got no idea but um Unfortunately, I think we are going to have to sort of wrap it up there due to sort of, uh, you know, I think me and you could probably talk about Mass Effect for like 10 hours straight. Definitely. <laughs> voices are just going out. So. <laughs> no, yeah, 100%. Definitely. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for uh, for inviting me on the channel. This was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we definitely could have could have gone for more. Uh, I also have to, to, to get out of here. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're both really busy, guys. We can't just do Mass Effect 20 <laughs> <laughs> as, as much as probably we'd we'd like to, to be honest. But um, but yeah, do you want to tell everyone sort of where they can find you on like social links? Or... Yes, for sure. So uh, yeah, if you would like to follow me on YouTube and subscribe to the channel, my channel is Paragon7. So it's just Paragon and then the number seven. I think my handle is at Paragon seven and then M E um, as well as I guess if you want to, I am doing a Dragon Age first playthrough uh, currently and I'm putting my thoughts out on the Twitter machine or X <laughs> if that's your preference for calling it. I know. Um, I get so confusing with calling it X and Twitter. I hate it. Yeah. I just call it Twitter <laughs> just because I know Elon would hate it. So I'm going to go with Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Atharia underscore. So that is at A-T-H-A-R-I-A -A underscore. Um, and yeah, 
but yeah, thank you again, uh, Lockhart, for uh, inviting me on the channel. It was a lot of fun. No problem. You're, you're welcome here anytime. And, you, you know, it's it's one of those things nice to have a different person's perspective. And uh, hopefully you guys can go check out, um, obviously, your content and everything. There'll be socials both on the screen, in the attached card, as well as in the description. So uh, if you guys want to go check out pretty much any anyone else in the mass effect community I, I really recommend doing it i think i think our community is quite i wouldn't say our community it sounds weird saying that but i think the mass effect <laughs> community as a as a whole is pretty good oh yeah <laughs> to be honest. oh and yeah it's no. full of lovely people and everything so it's nice from that perspective but Definitely. um thank you all so much for watching i know it's been a bit of a long one and hopefully you've had this on as sort of a i guess like podcast or something in the background but um for more on this channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we'll both see you on our respective channels, or maybe on this one, or maybe on yours in the future. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Bye.